the positives as a YouTuber, as somebody that's independent, creating content about this election, seeing how now the big corporations, the big media, all the big wigs are no longer the people of influence. And whether it's a big channel, 500,000, or whether people are watching 20 small channels, it's still the same impact. Of the it goes to show that this media, mm-hmm. this media who is controlled by you know groups of people, elite groups of people, that is being dismantled. I feel really good about that because that's me actually too. the reason why I started my channel. One of the reasons why, <clears throat> excuse me, I felt it necessary to start my channel. Probably similar to you, I you know how you have the broken traditions like breaking away from mm-hmm. you know certain things. My thing was kind of similar which is making things like exposing and making things visible because it to me it seemed like the things that at least the black community should have been should be talking about is not being talked about it's being completely looked over you Mm -hmm. know and that's where we get the bbl content and all that but yeah and, and and then knowing that in the mainstream you know those people guess what they can't talk about a lot of things they're uh whatever that you know they just can't, or even if they're going to interview somebody, that person is giving them all these parameters and restricting them. Don't ask me this. Don't ask me about my relationship. So y'all, people people think when they watch these mainstream media that they're getting something of quality. No, you're getting the most filtered version because yes. there's all these rules and there's all these words they can't say. And then there's all these restrictions around oh, what Beyonce will and will not talk about if she will even do an interview. And you're just getting the most watered down version mm-hmm. versus you have YouTubers who are going to get I me mean, granted YouTube, you know, has its own level of censoring, but you're going to get it more raw, more authentic, more, yep. Finding the stories that nobody else is willing to talk about, like how I told you about the Michelle Obama thing that you covered, that mm-hmm. is what people want. And I think yeah. people are starting to see the the impact. First of all, it's so accessible because you have your phone. Most people have their phones on them all day. It's so yep. accessible. And I think people are seeing... Um, and I don't know if, you know, I don't know if it's COVID. Like, I wonder when the shift... You know, was it the pandemic? Like, what kind of drew people? It might have been the pandemic away? because people knew they were being lied to. They knew what they were seeing in real life, and the news was parroting all the lies. I think it was COVID. And I'm going to give you an example about manufacturing, I guess, real stories or real things. <laughs> this woman I dated, right? Um, what she used to do for spare money, like to get extra cash, she was a retainer. To call radio shows to give crazy scenarios for them to react to, so it wasn't real stories. So uh-uh. she was on, yes, she was on retainer. She like Breakfast Club was one of her clients. She would call the show up like, yeah, my man cheated on me. He did this, and they're like, oh, that's crazy. Let's talk about it on the next segment. That was a thing. No. That's how manufactured these stories are. That was a, that so was a job. You, what? So I wonder who was paying her. It was a corporation. They they seek oh, so out it was talent. A corporation. Yeah, it's a corporation that worked with the radio stations. Like, all right, we need you for the Breakfast Club, or we might need you for you know, I don't know, Ricky Smiley Show, whatever. To come here to call up and give a crazy scenario about maybe my man cheated on me with a chicken, and just have a crazy story. And you tell this story, and they react to it. And she was getting paid like maybe two hundred dollars a call. Get it was out. just like, all right, I need some side money. Let me just. You know, put my name in, and they, they let me know to call in. Like she had like the professional voice. She had like the voice which you could change up and be more animated. She was good at it. And then when she told me wow. that, I'm like, wow, that's a thing. Dang, you know, and that's not even surprising because a lot of times some of these uh, reels and like people who getting big money off some of this content, a lot of that stuff, some of that stuff it's seems fake. so fake and so fake. reenacted. Yeah. This thing got a million views. I'm like, are you sure? It don't even look like this even really had. This look like they're acting. So yeah. that's interesting to hear mm-hmm. that there's someone on retainer who was doing that. Yeah, but then, then all that fakeness, people are now craving the authentic conversations, like the conversation yeah. you and I have, your content, sure. my content. People are now craving it, and it might not have that's the right. big impact of a CNN or MSNBC. But it's, well, it won't have the big viewership, but it has more impact because people are now seeing real authentic conversations they're not seeing nowhere else. And that space is now being wide open 
And I think that we have a great real estate right now that we're creating online, creating this type of space. People are loving it. And now the people that's on TV got to play catch up and come over here. Dang, and we have the advantage. Deep. Yeah. That's, that's, yeah, that, I love that you put, wove this into the conversation because that was one of the best things that came out of the election was me learning how that, the, the, how it was swayed, you know, and, but the fact that I was able to sort of kind of put myself in a bubble for this whole mm -hmm. election cycle and consume real voices like yourself. Cause I mm -hmm. think I really heavily started watching your channel more as it got close to the election. Cause some of your conversations were like, you know, helping, you know, just really helping me in that way. And I'm one of those people. So I get it because I'm one of those people who have been swayed by, um, in independent media in a yeah. good way. And, it, and mm -hmm. it helped me to get more, to feel more involved because a lot of times when it comes to the CNNs and the MSNBCs, I'm like, I feel so distant. I feel more like I, I don't, you know, okay, they're, they're saying this, but where are they getting it from? And, uh, but it, it's even better to be able to, I can go in your comment section or whoever's making the political video, their comment section and actually communicate with the person or communicate yeah. with their community. That's mm -hmm. a whole nother vibe. That's a whole nother yes. deal. And I love it because too, like with my comments or my content, I'm like, I didn't hear about that. Like, I think, for example, um, there was something I did. I like, I did a quick pop-up live before we went on, and we were speaking about something. No, all right, Project 2025, right? You know, that was the mm -hmm. biggest thing about um, what Trump is going to do. I did not know towards the end of the election or towards the end of the, well, uh, election day, the people who created Project 2025 endorsed Kamala Harris. And I didn't know that. Really? Yeah, and somebody yeah. said, yeah, it's a real thing. Like, I'll send you the article. So, like, me having conversations on a quick pop-up live and people coming in, they hear my, not my concern, but my confusion about what they're saying. They send me articles in real time for me to check it out. And once I check it out, I'm like, oh, okay. I can look at the article, see if it's from an official site, see where it's from, see who wrote it, see if it's credible. And if it fits all those criteria, I'll mention it in real time because now I got this information. You were not getting that from CNN. You're not getting that from Fox News. You're not getting that from MSNBC. You're not getting it from the major corporation channels. You're not okay. even ESPN, Fox Sports, whatever. You're not getting that. The independent yeah. media or the independent channels is the one that's doing the great work that people love. True. Yeah. That is so true. And oh man, that's good. And, and exactly. And especially when you're not sponsored, you know, or, or not to say, I mean, if you're sponsored, but you know, yeah, you can, there's nobody else, could, you you know, can only, only thing you got to do is stay within the YouTube guidelines. Other yep. than that, you can deliver the message that, mm -hmm. you know, that, and I agree with you, people are seeking that authentic, authenticity much more. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, like, it's actually, yeah, watch it's it, very watch encouraging. Podcast and hearing hear what people doing and seeing people not even editing stuff out no more, you hear a phone ring, you just, they let it go. Like, people want the real, raw conversations. They, to, they do. Yes. Ask it's like, how you know? Is your content? You say you might just pop up your phone and have a conversation while you're walking in the park. Like, yeah. people love that's it. That's exactly that's what I'm saying. Yeah, even the fact that some of my videos where I'm just outside, I'm like, I'm like, oh, I got to get out the house. And thinking like, oh, nobody's going to watch this because I'm just not in a studio. And then, you know, like, mm -hmm. oh, people actually didn't care. They, You know, because people, like you said, people, and some people may prefer it or even if they're like, oh, I don't like it. But they they're into the message, and that is a good thing too. Not necessarily all the bells and whistles of yes, some of those you know mainstream. Mm -hmm. So yeah, just the raw, authentic conversations, and you could be a yeah. part of the conversation within the comments. You could be part of the conversation. We yeah. do live streams. You could be part of the conversations where you have memberships. You could be part of different things. People are now supporting that. People want that. People yeah. are appreciative of your efforts and putting out the content and. These people yeah. that's on these channels, they leave in the channels and they trying to play catch up. They trying to use their name, image, and likeness. And a lot of wow. times they don't translate to success. They don't translate I to guess. success because you have a name, because you're famous, because you've been on TV. Now you're no longer a trusted source. People don't want to hear from you because they know that you are control operative. And the people who do want to hear from you are not going to support you because they could just find it on where they found you at, on CNN. You're just being replaced. Exactly. They can find you on Fox News. They can find what you're saying on Fox News. You're just being replaced. Exactly. Yeah. And wow. I, I, 
Yes. And, and two, yes. I like the fact that the people are leaving internet corporations that are creating content. Like, for example, um, Candace Owens left the Daily Wire. I was so happy yeah. about that because yeah. now she's allowed to do the content that she wants to do as opposed to content they want her to do. And yeah. seeing what she did with the uh, Kamala Harris breakdown of her Kamala Harris racial lineage, I don't know if the Daily Wire would have wanted that. But also seeing her do the content of George Floyd. I don't know if you've seen that or not on the Daily Wire. It was bad. So, yeah. It was bad. I saw, and you know, I think they did it together. I think it was bad, yes. She didn't what, she didn't it? reveal anything that people didn't know. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, interesting. Was that when she exposed Black Lives Matter or this was separate from her? It was the same Black thing. It was it was okay. things that people already knew. Like if you watched the clips that she put on say uh um you, YouTube or Instagram or X leading up to the show you didn't find nothing new except the things that you saw in those clips so it wasn't really like all some groundbreaking information like she did with Kamala's family racial lineage that was groundbreaking information that nobody knew about to the point that Kamala really people stopped saying that she's black like she was the one that stopped that an independent news source stopped that doing research getting information you know, that was very inspiring to see whether you are a yeah. Kamala supporter or not, just to see a one person show, well, not one person, she has a team, but seeing a person who created a team doing this kind of work. That's, that's what we need. And I think people are leaning towards that. Totally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think one of the last ones I watched was like, Oh, I talked to Kamala's uncle or something. Yeah. And, yeah and I'm just like, dang, that's crazy. How, like you said, even though aware that she has a team, but I'm sure it's, I would imagine it may be a small team. Yeah, yeah probably no more than 10 people. Powerhouse. Yeah. Yeah, she doesn't have that big powerhouse behind her anymore. And just to, you know, and then see like those videos get like millions, of, like at least a million views, you know? So mm-hmm. uh, it, it definitely even, lets me know what's possible. Yes, even seeing Tucker, uh, no, Don Lemon leaving CNN. I was happy. Like, you know, I didn't want to see a man lose his job. No. But I, I was happy to see Don Lemon bounce back and create his own content to the point that he had a, got a deal with X. Now, he fumbled the deal. He fumbled the deal with X. So Elon Musk got rid of the deal. But he, he was able to create a deal with X to have left-leaning content on X and have the conversation. Once he fumbled that deal, he started doing more uh, on-person, on-camera you know, interviews with people in the street. And that was pretty good for uh, Don Lemon. I was like, all right, it's good to see... You know, a Candace Owens, a Don Lemon, even a Mark Lamont Hill starting to create their own content once they left that umbrella of that security of, oh, I can't do this under a name no more. Let me create my own name and let people find me and let people rock with me independently. I'd rather see that. You know, I don't care you left, right, in the middle, you know, gay, straight, whatever. I want to see real authentic conversations that is not paid for or, 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 or controlled by sponsorships. Exactly. Exactly. Yes. Oh my goodness. Yeah. It, it it just gives me so much hope. You know. Um, I mean, I'm very much kind of you know very much behind you, <laughs> but my goal is to be one day like a media giant. Like I want to actually eventually get into documentaries, and not so much that I will be the one filming or anything, but like producing and like. Yeah, I'm working on a documentary. Really What'd you say now? I'm working on a documentary. Really? Yeah, it's been a documentary I've been working on for about, I want to say, three and a half years. Oh, wow. Yeah, 